Hi there, boys and girls. This is our final vodcast for Chapter 17 on the integumentary system. One easy way to remember what the integumentary system does is to remember the word integument. The word integument means to cover or means covering. So all you have to do is think about the different types of things that cover our body, such as skin, which has several important functions that we'll discuss throughout this vodcast. We also have nails that protect the sensors in our fingers and toes because there's a lot of them so we need to protect them. And then lastly we have hair which protects us from UV light and also keeps us warm. The main focus of today's vodcast is going to be on the skin and the different functions of the skin and the different parts of the skin. So let's take a look at the skin. Now here's a cross section of the human skin. So if we cut out a cube and you looked at it closely this is what it would look like. The human skin is made up of three different layers. The top layer we have is called the epidermis layer. Then the middle layer is called the dermis layer. And then at the bottom of the skin we have what's called the subcutaneous layer, also known as the fatty layer. Now we're going to start the epidermis layer here. The epidermis is the outermost layer and it's composed of dead cells that are filled with a chemical called keratin. This makes our skin water repellent and it also gives our skin the texture that we feel. Now another characteristic about the epidermis is that you'll notice that people have different types of skin colors and the reason why we have different types of skin colors is because we have a pigment called melanin that is produced in the epidermis. Now the purpose or the function of melanin is that it's a pigment that acts as a natural sunblock to protect our bodies from ultraviolet sunlight. You'll notice that in the summertime when you're outside more often and it's much warmer outside during the summertime, all that direct sunlight coming down on earth is going to hit you too. So our skin produces more melanin to absorb that ultraviolet radiation to protect us from different types of harm. However, this is not to say that we shouldn't wear sunblock. People with darker skin are a little less susceptible to skin disorders than fair skinned people. However, those darker skinned people should wear sunblock just in case. Now the first main function of the skin, including the epidermis, is to keep moisture inside of the body. If we didn't have a layer of skin on our body, what would happen is the water inside of our cells would evaporate and our cells would dry out. And this would be no good because cells need water for chemical reactions to occur. In addition to keeping the moisture inside of the body, our skin, especially our epidermis, keeps foreign particles out of the body that includes viruses, fungus spores, and bacteria that can cause certain types of infections. This is why when you get a cut, you need to wash out the cut because you've now broken the first barrier of defense against infection, the skin, and these pathogens, the bacteria and the viruses, can get in and, and cause some severe damage if we don't take care of that. Now if we move down to the second layer called the dermis, you'll notice that there's a lot of things inside of the dermis. And these objects inside of the dermis help out with the other functions of our skin. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are these nerves here, these sensory neurons. These sensory neurons help us with our second function of the skin. The sensory neurons keep us in touch with our environment. And these sensory neurons end in specialized neurons called receptors that give us information about our environment, such as temperature. We can feel temperature if something's hot or cold. So if something's too hot, we can move away from it or pull our body part away from it so there's no damage or burns that occur to our bodies so we protect ourselves. You also have pressure receptors inside of your skin to let us know when something is walking on us or crawling on us or pushing down on us. Those are our pressure receptors. And then we have pain receptors, our least favorite ones of all. So although pain is very uncomfortable and we don't like it, it plays a very important function to us because if we do sustain an injury, we know something is wrong. If we don't feel pain, then we wouldn't know anything was wrong and we'd go on about our daily lives and then our condition would just get worse. So sensory neurons help us with that function. Now we're going to move to these structures. They look like big piles of spaghetti and these are called our sweat glands. And our sweat glands actually help us with two functions. The third function of the skin is to help us control our body temperature. As you know, when you run around, you burn up energy and then your body increases its temperature, so you get hot. And in response to that, you produce sweat. The sweat is produced inside of these glands underneath the skin. And as you can see, they move out through these ducts out of openings called pores and then the sweat pours out all over your skin. Now the way sweat helps us cool off is that it's not that our sweat comes out at an ice cold temperature that reduces our body heat. Remember, our sweat is made inside of our body which is at 98.6 degrees. The way that sweat helps us cool off is that when the sweat evaporates it lifts the heat up off of us. 
and that heat escapes into the environment. So that's how sweat helps us control our body temperature so we don't get too hot. The sweat glands also do a second function for us. So our fourth function of the skin is to help get rid of wastes such as salt, water, urea, and heat. So if you've ever tasted your sweat before, if you were playing in a sport and you're sweating, sometimes the sweat will get on your lips or maybe get on your tongue as you're running up and down the field, and you'll notice it has a salty taste to it. So we're getting rid of extra salts, and obviously that sweat's made of water, so we're getting rid of water as well. And we're also getting rid of a diluted form of urea, which is a metabolic waste that's produced by our body. Usually urea is excreted out of our body through urine, but our sweat helps us get rid of some of that as well. And then obviously we get rid of some heat because when the sweat evaporates, it cools us down. The other parts of the dermis include these glands here that are called the oil glands. Now these oil glands, are they produce exactly what they're named after, oil. So the oil pour out of openings in our skin called the pores again, and normally these oil glands are attached to hair that come out of our skin, and then the oil is going to spill it onto the skin, and as we know, oil doesn't mix with water, so it helps make our skin waterproof. So this explains why after someone hasn't showered after a couple of days, their hair gets all greasy and oily and their skin gets all oily and, and feels that way, is because we have glands underneath the skin that produce the oil for us. Now we also have hair located deep inside the skin in the dermis layer, and the structure inside the dermis layer is called the hair follicle. The hair follicle is the area where new hair cells are made. So whenever you get a haircut or you shave and you, and you cut all these top parts of the hair off, although these parts of the hair are gone, we haven't gotten rid of the place where the hair is actually being produced. So as a result, the hair follicles are going to generate new hair cells that are going to make the hair grow longer. And then we're going to have to get another haircut somewhere down the line. In addition to the dermis, we have blood vessels. So obviously we have cells in the, in the skin, so we need our blood vessels to bring nutrients to the cells and then take wastes away from the cells. So we have the red vessels called arteries that bring in the good blood, and then we have blue vessels called the veins that take the old blood. So those are the different parts of the dermis that we have. And just in summary, the dermis is the layer below the epidermis that has these structures such as the sweat glands, the oil glands, the sensory neurons, the hair follicles, and the hair coming out. Now the last layer that we have here is called the fatty layer. Now the fatty layer is a layer of fat that's stored underneath the dermis and this is used for insulation. So this helps keep our body warm. In addition to that, this is the tissue that actually attaches to the muscle below the skin. So without the fatty layer, we couldn't keep the skin nice and tight along our muscles. In addition to that, in addition to that, the fat cells in the fatty layer help to produce vitamin D, which is our fifth function of the skin. And vitamin D is important to us because it's used to absorb calcium while we digest our food. And without the calcium, we couldn't store that calcium in our bones to make our bones nice and strong. So those are the five functions of the skin, and those are the three major layers of the skin, and then melanin as well. Now lastly, I just want to discuss one more feature about the skin that everyone should know about, and that feature is called skin cancer. Now lastly, I'd like to discuss a well-known disorder of the skin called skin cancer. So let's take a look at what skin cancer looks like. Now here we have some images of skin cancer. Now cancer itself, not just skin cancer, but all types of cancer is caused when damaged DNA leads to uncontrolled cell division. So our body produces a bunch of extra cells that really don't carry out any sort of function and they take up resources such as oxygen and, and glucose and water and they produce extra wastes. So they starve the good cells from the nutrients that they do need causing those cells to, to die off. Now this particular type of cancer we're going to talk about today is called skin cancer. Skin cancer can affect everybody, especially people that like to stay out at the beach. Now as we said, Melanin is a pigment that's made inside of our body that acts as a natural sunblock. However, it doesn't protect us from everything, and that's why you should always wear some sort of sunblock, especially a fairly high number sunblock. Now, skin cancer can show up as a mole on the skin, and there's four different symptoms to look for. Now, the first thing that you want to look for is asymmetry in the mole. Symmetry means that when you cut something in half and fold it together, both sides will exactly match up. If you take a look at a cancerous mole, you'll notice that if you cut it in half, the sides will not match up, so it makes it asymmetrical. So that's one symptom. The second symptom is an irregular shaped or poorly defined border. It's not nice and round, it has a scalp look, and it looks like it has bumps coming out of it, so it looks like a weird type of spot. Third symptom would be the color. And as you can see in this picture here, this cancerous mole has three different shades of color in it. 
So if you can't see the color on the picture itself, you can take a look at the black and white images and see the different shades of black and gray to denote the different shades of color in the actual mole. And then the fourth symptom and final symptom is its diameter, how wide across it is. The rule of thumb is if it's larger than six millimeters, then it could be cancerous. Now if you're not sure what six millimeters is, it's essentially the diameter of a pencil eraser. So if you were to press a pencil eraser down on this mole, you would see that it's much bigger than the pencil eraser and that could be a problem. So it's definitely something that should be checked out. Now the dangerous part about skin cancer is that even though the skin cancer is on the skin, these cells that form underneath the epidermis in the dermis layer can detach themselves from the actual tumor or the mole and enter the bloodstream. And once these cells are in the bloodstream, they have a free highway to go to any place in the body and cause more cancerous growths. And the more cancerous growths people have, the more dangerous it is and the more life-threatening it is. So it's always important that when you go out, you should wear a good sunblock to protect your skin to reduce your chances of skin cancer. Well, that concludes today's lesson on the integumentary system. Thank you so much for your time.